Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. Today we have the release of patch 1.1.1.1 and with it come a slew of quality of life improvements that should make the end game a bit more enjoyable. And that of course begins with the addition of the masterwork weapons, the vendor upgrade, and also some fixes from Bungie to help with the whole DLC lockout issue. Let's get into it. Starting off with the weekly milestones, we can see that, well, the Flashpoint is on Mercury, and if you don't own Curse of Osiris, that means you can't do the Flashpoint this week. At this point, if you're a Destiny fan or a Destiny player, this is kind of a truth that you're going to have to get used to. Bungie has made it very clear that moving forward, all of these pinnacle endgame activities are going to require the latest expansion, which you're definitely entitled your opinion on. But for me as a seasoned Destiny player, I'm expecting Destiny to cost me around $80 a year. That's $60 for the base game, $35 for the season pass, and then this fall we're going to have a major expansion that will most likely be another $40, and if they plan it correctly and have enough content to dish out, there should be two more expansions giving us another expansion pass for year two. So that's $40 plus $35 more for year two content. So the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to keep playing Destiny 2 and is that money going to be worth your time? For me, Destiny is what I call my forever game. It's the game that I have digitally always there, ready for me to log in whenever I want. I play other games on the side, but Destiny is always going to be home because it's something that I'm just absolutely in love with, despite all of these issues, because at the heart of things, I know Bungie has the best intentions and they're always going to work towards making the community as happy as possible. It may take some time, but I've learned to be patient with the game over the last three years, and nothing's changed now. And at the end of the day, Destiny still continues to give me the most rewarding gaming experience, mostly from a social and a gameplay fun standpoint. Anyways, moving on, as promised, the prestige mode for Leviathan has been reduced down to recommended power of 300. Curiously though, it's the same as Leviathan normal mode, although they did mention that they had reduced the difficulty of normal mode back down a little bit, so I guess there will be enough of a differentiation, of course, with the addition of prestige having additional mechanics. However, the prestige nightfall will still be remaining at 330. Moving on, the big thing this week is the introduction of masterwork weapons. These are special or sort of like deluxe versions of legendary weapons with additional perks, including things like stat bonuses, the ability to create orbs on multi-kills, the ability to keep track of kills with that weapon. And so these are being introduced to give us some optional pursuits. So the idea is that these are very rare to get, and the idea is that you want to build out your entire arsenal to be Masterworks weapons. As soon as I get a few, I'll make another video going over this in more detail. Moving on, as you can see, we don't have the faction rally yet. We still don't have any word on whether or not it's delayed an entire week or just a couple days. But either way, we do have new vendor items available from most vendors. This means that you can purchase armor pieces directly from these vendors, and they will each feature a weapon that will rotate periodically. My guess is every week. So this addition should give you much more control over building your armor sets. Moving on, we do have the new gift consumables. You can pop one of these during a crucible match or a strike, and then you can grant your team an additional reward. And that does include the possibility for everyone to get an exotic. And here you can see it's also available from the Vanguard for strikes, and then it's also available from Tess Everest. Although the ones she's selling are very expensive, I don't know why anyone in their right mind would spend the Bright Dust on it. And honestly, it probably didn't even need to be added to Eververse in the first place, but here it is either way. My only hope here is that they have a chance to drop from Bright Engrams, kind of like how the boosters did in Destiny 1. Anyways, those are the major changes this week. I'll leave a link to the full patch notes if you want to read up on the rest. Also, let me know in the comments below what you think of the new Masterworks weapons. Do you have any? How do you feel about them? Let's discuss. Aside from that, drop a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more Destiny content. And I will see you all next time.